actually have some more things that I want to talk about in the next video. There are a lot of positive things that happened over the weekend and I'll talk about that and Trump signed a few executive orders that I think are really good. So I'll talk about that in my next video. This one is about Beverly Hills. I don't know if you saw, but Beverly, there were some protests in Beverly Hills last night. 28 protesters were arrested and held overnight. Um, but that is not the most interesting part of the story because that is what happens when you don't follow the rules that people are giving you. You get in trouble, but apparently a lot of people do not understand that. So Beverly Hills put a, a um, basically a curfew on any gathering over 10 people. And that had to do with the fact that there were violent riots in Beverly Hills about a month ago. Um, Rodeo Drive was destroyed. A lot of stores were completely destroyed, completely looted, damaged. Uh, people were attacked. It was bad news. Uh, so this happened on the evening. I think it was May 30th. That was about the worst night of, of all the riots that we saw here in the U.S., including here in L.A., I accidentally got caught in the middle of it and it was not fun. It very much opened my eyes to how quick things can go bad and how quick seemingly normal people can turn violent once they're in a mob. So I am all for having people go home early. Nothing good happens at night. That's what our mothers told us when we were little. You wanna peacefully protest during the day? That's fine completely fine. Everyone is all for that. But when it turns night and the police give you a time, you follow that. But what ended up happening is some people defied the curfew and then were shocked and appalled when they were arrested, which is what the police told them was going to happen if they disobeyed the curfew. <laughs> and they disobeyed the curfew and they got arrested. So you see all these videos and I'm gonna get back to the protests last night in just a second. So I'm seeing these stories pop up about all of these protesters getting arrested. I go on Twitter and I see a few of the protesters and, and what they said. So a few people got that got arrested and you, I encourage you to go on, to, it's very entertaining, go on Twitter and um, look up the hashtag Beverly Hills. Um, a few of the people that got arrested were saying, oh my God, I was held for 10 hours and got no phone call, no this, no that, blah, 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 basically whining like babies. Let me tell you something. I have been in areas where riot police have been called out. I used to live by a huge party college when I was younger and they would throw huge block parties like twice a year. And every year they would call it the riot police because the deal was, okay, you can have these block parties during the day, but at this time you have to dissipate. That's when things start getting a little bit hairy and they need to break up the crowd. And when the crowd wouldn't break up, they would start to move forward. They would move forward with the tear gas and the pepper spray and everything. And this is just what happens when you have a lot of people in one place and you're not obeying the orders that you are given. Cops are there to, to give law and order. Um, so I'm used to this. This is just what happens. Sorry, it, it's life. It's it's what happens. Um, so these these protesters are okay. So the protesters are saying this on Twitter, and then you go and look at the headlines, and the headlines are all 28 arrested over peaceful protest. Peaceful. All you see is peaceful protest. Well, I also searched on Twitter again. Don't just listen to me. Do this yourself if you want to see it. I also searched on Twitter images and videos from the protest last night, not the earlier one on May or Mar ugh, May 30th, which was super, super dangerous, but from this one. Now they're calling themselves peaceful protesters. There were things that were looted and vandalized during the peaceful protest. They were also walking down the street chanting, eat the rich. And I'm sorry, saying eat anything, eat the rich, that's not a peaceful protest chant. That sounds more like like a threat or like or like a call to violence, if you ask me. So I don't know what part of this, because people weren't actively going and punching people. Um, and I'm sorry, but you're all welcome to peacefully protest. But when you start disrupting the lives of the residents, that's not okay. These are innocent people that have nothing to do with what you're angry about or your cause. And this was supposed to be a Black Lives Matter protest. So why are you walking down the street chanting, eat the rich? I'm really confused about that. You're doing this because of justice and then you're there um, 
chanting a, a call to violence. If, if you were to ask me, what, what else is that? Eat the rich, what does that mean? Um, so a lot of people got arrested for that and then they whined about it. And the more and more I watch footage of these protests, it's these young people that seem to not understand how life works or how policing works or anything for that matter. They seem to not understand what a consequence is. They seem to be, if anything, just super entitled and just want to push their ideology on everyone else. And if you don't comply, you're evil and you are wrong and all of a sudden they're a victim. I can't tell you how many times I've seen footage from some of these protests where the cops are standing in a line very peacefully and they're saying, back up, back up. They warn people way more than I even feel like they should. What is about to happen and what they need people to do and people get in their face and they defy them and they threaten them and they yell at them and they spit on them and they throw things at them and then they get upset and cry like little babies when the pops when the cops push back. And then every headline you see, cops agitating peaceful protesters. Let me tell you something, the majority of the footage I've seen, not the footage they're gonna show you on mainstream media, people are not being peaceful towards these police officers. And it's a shame. Um, so that's what happened in Beverly Hills last night. I think a lot of these people were released, but I'm really happy that the city of Beverly Hills is taking action and pushing back. More cities need to be doing this because right now what's happening, people are getting away with this stuff and that's why they're still continuing to do it. So I, I personally am happy that these people got arrested. I've been arrested before. You don't see me crying and whining about it. And the same thing happened to me <laughs> when I got arrested. I spent the night in jail before because I was a really dumb 21 year old. And guess what? I was there for about 10 to 15 hours before I was allowed to have the phone call because I was being an asshole. And I'm just gonna be really honest with you, I was. You didn't see me going and whining and crying about it because I, I was warned about what was gonna happen. I, I was given a boundary and I pushed that boundary. Therefore, I accepted, like a woman, the consequence because I chose to accept the boundary. Did I do a dumb thing to get arrested? Yes, but did I complain and whine and blame my arrest on police brutality and this and that? No, because First of all, I was treated fine. I crossed a boundary that was laid out for me and I took the consequence. So, you know, if you're gonna go out there and protest for a cause, and hey, you know what? If you're gonna push back about against the cops, push back against the cops, but don't whine like a little baby when you're handed a consequence. Okay, woo, that's my thoughts on that. Um, I have another video coming out with some positive things that happened this weekend because there were a lot of positive things that happened. Uh, stay tuned for that, but bye you guys.